you, Chris, and returning to our primary coverage and specifically the governor's race as the Republican part of the picture continues to evolve. We're joined by longtime political reporter now with News Channel Nebraska, Joe Jordan. Joe, this could be 20 years ago. Thank you for joining us tonight. Mary, glad to be here. I think the first thing to keep in mind if we go through the final phases of this election count is that the Herbster campaign still confident they can pull this off. But I'll tell you, the optimism isn't what it was 24, 48 hours ago. They now know that Jim Pillen is a formidable candidate, is giving them a real run for their money. They still believe it's, it's either Herbster or Pillen. They think that in the end, State Senator Lindstrom comes in third. And in the end, if this does turn into a Pillen win, it's very clear that in the past week and a half, the attack ads against Charles Herbster took their toll all the campaigns pretty much thought this was a one-on-one -on -one Herbster Pillen. So if Pillen wins, look at those attack ads going forward as to what caused Herbster's downfall. Keep in mind, still too close to call. Lots of votes yet to be counted. Joe, I don't know how much time we have left. I'm going to throw one question at you, and that's just to explain for our viewers who've been watching the last few hours votes come in. Lindstrom's ahead early, then he's tied with Pillen, and now we see this shift. What happens with precincts reporting that would explain that within the state of Nebraska? Well, the consensus, the conventional wisdom, Mary, is that the Lindstrom campaign was going to get a lot of the early mail-in vote. That was the vote that was counted between 8 and 9 o'clock, and the majority of that would come from Douglas, Sarpy, and Lancaster counties, where Brett Lindstrom is best known. As the vote came in from the more rural counties where Lindstrom is less known, his vote totals began to dwindle down and the Pill and Herbster numbers started to go up.